So here we go. YouTube time. I'm sitting in my bed. Comfy as always. If I'm not having a good time and I'm not comfortable, I'm not making YouTube videos. So been enjoying a long, uh, good Thanksgiving with some friends, some family. And I just want to say thank you, friend, for being my friend today, for spending time with me. And I am Paul, and I am your friend. And I just want to say thanks for uh, tuning in today. I'm going to try to set it up uh, so my uh, videos aren't too long. Because some people don't like long videos. I don't care. <laughs> I like to enjoy, uh, you know, because I don't know, I enjoy making videos. I enjoy uh, talking to friends and, and sharing my thoughts. I have a lot of friends from around the world who are constantly asking me to uh, share on a certain topic or discuss something or something interesting always comes up in conversation. So anyway, I got my little timer going, so I'll try to keep it under 30, but uh yeah so so many things to talk about today so many things always come up but uh, as you know me I'm not one of those beginning middle and end kind of people I try to be but I just want to share my heart with you and just be real and genuine instead of dealing with this stuff my sister's coming to town hooking me up with some new equipment because I've just been using my uh, my phone so I'll get something with better lighting better audio and picture and all that stuff but i'd rather do something instead of not do something some of us have dreams and desires and passions and then we don't do anything until everything in our life works out perfectly you know until we do everything just right we won't do it and then as you've always heard me share my favorite philosopher wayne gretzky you miss 100 percent of the shots you never take so you got to take some shots you got to try you got to uh you know do the things you love and this reminds me when I was hanging out with one of my friends just chatting back and forth talking about life and things uh, he brought up a couple good uh, points a couple good examples that I thought were really interesting and I thought I'd share them with you too because you know uh, anyway I like to steal your excuses on this uh, channel as you've known you come on and I'm gonna just take away your excuses from you not being successful in the things you set your mind to and the goals that you have planned out and I had a friend of mine ask me well what is success to you you know does success mean money does success mean you know you have uh, just all the things you always wanted what does success look like and that's a great question to me what success looks like in my life is me enjoying God walking in just co-laboring with him and all the visions and all the dreams and the fellowship that we have together, I want to bring his dreams and his visions into reality. I want to manifest them. I want to reveal them in the world. I don't want to be a person who just lives and breathes and doesn't do what he sees in his heart. So all the things that God's shown me or all the passions and desires I have, I want to live them out. I want to enjoy them. I want other people to enjoy the things that I see in my heart but I know a lot of people get afraid and and uh, we've discussed this a little bit about you know why humanity is the way it is why people want so much if then they don't do it and and then they set such small insignificant almost uh, you know markers in their life and when they attain it well I need to get married I need to have a car I need to you know have a house and, and then if I have that then I'm happy you know and we we settle for something so small so I'm always trying to help people wake up and dream bigger not just sleeping and dreaming but where you wake up and your dreams you start living them out in this reality where you make it uh, you know make it real make it uh, enjoyable you know I tell people if you're not enjoying life you're not doing something right like life is meant to be enjoyed and some people say well my circumstances are are tougher than yours and and I don't, maybe I don't have as much money as you or I don't have as much opportunity as you do because you're in a country where you have more uh, things going for you. But I'm realizing that's less and less true because I can go to any country and any 
any poverty stricken nation and start succeeding and prospering because it's not the country or the circumstances or the opportunities that arise it's your own choice on how you choose to live and how you choose to respond of course you can't control what everyone does to you in your life but you can control yourself and you can invest into yourself and you can make the choices and decisions that you need to to get you to go where you want to go I, I had a friend ask me you know what uh, what do you invest in can you talk about two things talk about investing and how you invest your time and what you like to invest into and uh, what kind of businesses but also please share spiritual things and I'd love to share spiritual things but I don't want this channel to be about where we share just Christianese and Christian jargon because to a lot of people that doesn't make sense but I also don't want to make this thing about where we just talk business and then a lot of people don't Maybe they're not interested in that. So I want to try to blend the best of both worlds into this. So what do I like to invest into? My favorite thing to invest into, what's lasting, what's eternal, what has the most value, the most longevity is people. I love to invest into people. And my friend said, well, I want to see some of your investments, you know, like I want to see who you invested in and what their life turned out to be like. You know, I want to see what you're putting your time and your effort into. And man, one day he will. He'll meet a lot of my friends and he'll see the people that I chose to, you know, be friends with. And we encourage one another. And it's not just me trying to pour into somebody. It's like me just being friends with people, learning from them, being encouraged by him. As I spoke with my friend, I got so encouraged and so motivated to make another video. You know, I'm waiting for better equipment and I'm waiting for better circumstances and I don't have to sit in my comfy bed and do that here. I can go, you know, in a studio, in a Batman cave and, and have the best kind of setup, you know, but it doesn't matter to me. You know, as long as I'm helping those who care and those who are interested, you know, it's not about how many people you have following you or what you can do. I always joke and just say, please thumbs down and unsubscribe and you don't like it. I don't care, you know. It's not about always having people like you or always having everybody, you know, honor you or follow you or support you. It's about you doing what you love. When you do what you love, you do what you enjoy, other people will see that and they'll want to be a part of it. Because when you speak about it, you speak about it with such passion such intensity, such joy, and uh, others want to be a part of that. So whenever I go to any country, I just share my heart and share my lifestyle. And when difficult things happen to me, uh, I choose to live out and do things righteously. And they're like, why would you do it that way? And I was like, well, because it's not worth fighting with people. It's not worth arguing. It's not worth hurting one another to get ahead in this life. It's not worth it for me. So when I choose to live a certain way, it doesn't matter where I am. If I choose to live according to the laws of the universe, the laws of faith, the laws of the Bible, the laws of the gospel, those things have a much greater impact than just your mindsets on what you think is, you know, what you think is important. Those things are lasting. And those are the things I like to focus on. So... People is what I love to invest in. And a friend of mine, I shared an, on, on some of my notes of random notes and thoughts. I just share random things people have shared with me and things that really touch my heart. And I've always been taking notes in my phone, just so many wonderful ideas and thoughts and certain phrases that I hear that just really touch my heart. And I love to share those things. So, and some of those I shared where my friend just said, you know, I just help people in a few areas just to help them refocus and center their mind to to live right now some of these areas are your soul obviously your mind will emotions intellect these areas of your you know people say save our souls right save our spirits you can kind of put that into that category if you wanted to let me see if i can pull it up sometimes i can paraphrase but i like to share things and I like to be pretty uh, thorough sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes I like to be thorough. 
And I want to share these areas because these areas are very important, not just to me, but when helping somebody, helping them deal with their relations. Because uh, sometimes you have people you're working with and you're struggling in life is because of the relationships that you have with people that aren't, you know, not doing too good, not doing that well. Here it goes. My friend said this to me and I shared this earlier in one of my videos, but live an open life. Live a simple life anyone can follow. My friend shared that with me and it really touched my heart because it's it's so good. It's, we have to live in such a way where other people can see it and if they like it and they see what you're doing and they appreciate your life, they can try to follow that without having uh, you be a lord or bossing or lording over them. But it's just you live such an example that it's a bright example and then you're like a hero to people. But just because you chose to do things right, just because you chose to live in such a way that others can see and follow, not something that's an unattainable and impossible, but just practical daily experiences, daily life, daily things we go through and how we choose to handle ourselves in them. So my friend said these five areas that he loves to help people with is the soul, the flesh, taking care of your body, taking care of those things that need to help you, your finances, help you with your finances, teaches you to, you know, be wise, how to manage your finances well, how to get out of debt perhaps, or get out of that trap that you fall into. Relationships, either with your wife, with your mom and dad, with friends, or just with strangers that you meet. Helping people deal with that, because a lot of people just are not good at making relationships. They're not make, They're not good at making friends. They're not good at you know, engaging with strangers. Eventually you find out like, I love talking to random strangers. Yesterday I went for a walk and as I was just walking my dog, uh, a guy just was just like, hey, hey, can you help me? And I couldn't hear him. I had my headphones in. I'm listening to all the words that God's ever said to me. I'm listening to my dreams and my visions. And I'm constantly keeping my mind focused on things God's showing me and things I'm interested in. And and anything I write in my journals that stand out from my dreams, I write it down, I listen to it, I record it on audio, I put it to music sometimes, and I just listen to it. I keep my mind focused. But as I was listening, he was yelling at me, and then I stop and find out what he needs, and he just needed help getting his car jumped. I went to pick up my car, some jumper cables, and, and spent like, I don't know, 30 minutes or 40 minutes with him just sitting there tinkering around with the car and I'm not a mechanic I don't like it but just to talk to a guy just to help him just to do what I can is so interesting you know and I think it's really great when we can just I've always looked for opportunities you know sometimes life gives us opportunities and I watched this one TV show a while ago where every time there would be a uh, opportunity to help this person was always there and every time you're in trouble anytime any circumstance came up it's like as though an angel showed up and was always there to assist and it was always so encouraging it was always so meaningful it's like it was always on time and that's what I like to do I like to be one of those person that makes himself available that anywhere I go anytime anyone needs help anytime someone's in danger anytime somebody just needs a hand and like I appear out of nowhere like I love that I wanted to be that kind of person and and it just took me desiring that and now wherever I go I just am conscious and, and, and aware of that to to help people just to be available not to be too busy doing my own thing not to be lost in my own world so much that I can't stop and help somebody when they're in need and they're they're asking and it's not always money that fixes things because you can give people money 24 7 and in the end, you still have the same problems. Money's not always the fix-all. It helps a lot in a lot of situations. And it feels like if you pour enough money on it, it'll go away and the problems will get resolved. But, yeah, that's not always the case. Sometimes there's incurable diseases. Sometimes there's character flaws and defects that pouring money on it every day doesn't fix it. You have to make choices. And you can do so much without money. Maybe I should make a YouTube video. How many things can you do in this life without money? <laughs> can you breathe without money? You know, can you drink water without money? Can you 
be happy without money. I think that'll be a fun one to make because there's too many people around the world who think money is the answer and money is the solution to all things. And it's not. It's just because maybe a certain mindset we develop. Money sure helps, but a lot of people says, well, I'm just not happy or I don't have everything and I have to work and, and do what I hate. Well, you don't have to always do what you hate. You can do things that you love. But the things that I love don't produce enough money or the things that I love aren't generating enough for me to do what other things that I want to do. So we do what we hate for the rest of our life and we call that a life. I tell people it's not like you quit your job, you throw away your family and your responsibilities and then you just, you know, follow your dreams and when you finally achieve your dreams then you go and love your family and love your friends and love your wife and kids. A lot of people do that. They chase money so much that they'll sacrifice everything on the altar of money, the altar of mammon or the god of this world. They'll lay their whole life down to chase money. I, I can't do that. That's not how I live my life. That's not how I choose to share. But anything I talk about, I can talk about any subject and someone will always find something wrong with it. Uh, someone came to me and says, hey, look, someone doesn't like your videos and I'm like finally some hate mail <laughs> I've been waiting for this you know it's like well Paul just talks too much about money you know and it's not about money it's about God and God doesn't want us to be rich God wants us to be poor and I'm thinking this individual doesn't read the Bible this individual doesn't know his Heavenly Father this individual doesn't know that God above all things desires that you prosper and be in good health. That doesn't mean be rich. That doesn't mean have millions of dollars or billions or trillions. I like to talk about that because I like to always think big, but that's not what that means. That means for you to prosper, whatever that looks like in your life, whatever standard you chose to set. Now, everyone has a different standard of what they think prosperity is. Some people win the lottery and they think that's prosperity and and then they lose it all. And then other people, they make, you know, a six-figure salary. And they're figuring like, hey, I'm living life, but they're miserable. So I wish I had more. And I think uh, from some movie, The Wolf of Wall Street or something, where they asked the guy, how much money is enough? What what number? And he just said, more. I, I just need more. I can have a hundred million and I need more. I can have... 100 billion and, and I just need more some people they just they constantly need more that's it's never enough no matter what you have sometimes it's never enough and then you see people who have absolutely nothing and they're full of joy and happiness and their life is complete and fulfilled it's how you choose to live it and I spoke with my friend and I said you know sometimes when trying to reach your goals and dreams the first thing you should do is at least write it down, describe it in detail if you can, whatever your heart's desire, write it out. Write out the things you're believing for, the things you're contending for, the things you're striving for. Write it out. Write out what it is. And I don't remember where I heard this, but someone was saying that if you write it down, you're 40% more likely to achieve your goals and dreams. A lot of times we have all these passions and desires, but we don't write it down. We don't make plans. We don't even make a road map to how to get there. And I understand we don't know how. It's frustrating when, you know, you have a dream or a vision and you just don't know how to achieve it. Now, for me, I have certain dreams and ambitions to go to Siberia, to start mining operations, to do amazing and great things. I'm, I'm going to Japan soon. I have a friend inviting me to Haiti. I have a friend inviting me to visit her in Cyprus. She's an intercessor, an amazing lady. And and just, I have so many countries that I want to go visit. I keep having dreams about Brazil. I want to go back there. And like, I have all these desires, even Borneo. I just had a dream and I had someone begging me, please come to Borneo. We need help. And I said, uh, I'm in India right now because I have desires to go to India and I want to help, you know, and... And someone's like, yeah, I know India's poor and they need help in some areas, but like, we need help too. Can you please come to Borneo? And I said, man, this feels like 
the book of Acts where people were saying, Paul, please come to Macedonia. You know, it's so cool how, you know, you have all these desires. And, and for me, I don't just pack up and leave tomorrow. I'm just waiting on these words. I'm chewing on them. I'm thinking about them. I'm getting more and more excited about it. But I'm not trying to force anything to happen. I let my life flow. And my life unfolds so beautifully. I don't try to force things to happen. But what I do is write it down. I think about it. I meditate it. I chew on it. I do some research. I try to sometimes make a game plan that helps me move in that direction. I study so I can understand and be more equipped when I get into whatever I'm interested in. So I do my part and then I let God do his part. But I always try to uh, position myself in a place where it's easier for me to receive the things that he has for me. So now what? Now that you've written it down, what's the next step? Uh, here's what a friend of mine did. I can share from my life all the time, but sometimes I just don't want it always to be about me and my perspectives all the time. I, I love sharing some of my friends' ideas because sometimes their examples might be just a little bit brighter than mine, a little more clearer. But a friend of mine uh, was just wanting to remodel her room. Now that's a small dream, not something major, you know, but you need money to paint, to buy wallpaper, to buy new furniture, you know, you need money to do things, right? So so she decided to, to do that. So she found a, a picture and she made a collage of things that she's believing for and contending for. And she uh, just cut out a bunch of things that she was looking for. And in one of the pictures, it was some girl who has blonde and blonde highlights and she has like red fingernails and she's holding, you know, money fanned out, you know. And she's like, yeah, that's the image I need because I need that money to be able to buy all these things. So every night before she would go to bed, she would like look at that collage and just think on it and meditate. And just throughout her day, she would just envision that. So as she was envisioning everything that she's desiring, and she's praying, obviously. We all pray. Some people say, well, Paul, sounds like too much like the world. You're blending the world into spiritual matters. God wants us poor. Well, if you think God wants you poor and you don't want to listen to me, don't. Bye-bye. You're not supposed to be here. I want people who understand that I'm sick of poverty. I don't want to be in poverty. I don't want to have a poverty mindset. We serve a God and a king who's wealthy beyond streets made with gold. Why do we think so poor? He gave us a planet. He told us to have dominion over it. He told us this is your planet. Rule it and reign here. And you're living poor. That's your choice. You can change your mind. You can change your heart. You can change your circumstances if you desire to. All right. Going back to that vision that uh, young lady had, and as she held that money and she saw it, it was so amazing to her that randomly one day her uncle calls her and says, you know what, I just have a desire to give you some money. And she's like, no, I, I don't need it. I'm okay. You know, he's like, nope, I need to. And then he sends her some money. And then she has dark hair, but later on she had her hair dyed blonde. And then later on she had her fingernails painted red subconsciously without noticing and then when the money does show up she's so excited she was just talking to her friends or her mom and then she fans out the money and then she takes a picture of it and would you know later on she looks at that collage and it blows her mind away how it happened almost subconsciously she sees that same exact image of the blonde hair girl with red fingernails fanning out money she manifested into reality her belief and her dream to be able to take care of her family, to fix her room, to upgrade some things. Now, that's a beautiful example. Anytime I needed anything, I would believe and pray and contend, and sometimes it would take a long time for something to manifest. But I've received cars, furniture, books, anything I needed, I've always wrote it down, and then it just shows up in my life. Because I see it, I envision it, I believe it, and things show up to me, things come to me. Now the world calls it the secret of envisioning and believing. 
The world calls it this, and motivational speakers talk about things very similar to this. But what they're doing is they're stealing spiritual principles and elements of faith. The secrets of the universe, right, is what they would call it. These things is something God placed as rules and laws that govern this galaxy, this universe, where we're in. We can believe, and we can receive, and we can envision. Your imagination is so powerful. So write out your dream, write out your hope, write out your vision so clear. And when you do, now you have something to imagine. And then you have something to talk about. So then when you meet people and you talk to people, they say, hey, so, you know, what are you interested in? What are you doing? And you can just, the only thing that's in your heart and your mind is your vision, is your desire. That's the only thing that comes out of your mind. And then you meet other people who have the same thing. And then you meet businessmen and investors who are like, man, I've been looking for someone who can help me with that. Can you work with me? Do you want to partner with me? You're, you're wanting the same thing I'm doing. But if you never write your vision down, you never talk about it, you never speak about it, you don't dream about it, you don't envision it, you don't have a collage of what you're believing and contending that your eyes can see, then all you're doing is just you're floating around in an endless ocean and you're just waiting for the current to take you somewhere. You're you're, you're not making any progress. You're just kind of like, well, let's see where life takes me. And then you're working a job you don't like. You don't like it, change it. Well, it's tough times. It's COVID times. I get it. But your perspective can change. The way you choose to live your life, the way you choose to believe and live can change. Now, I'm talking natural things. I'll make this, I'll make another one revealing spiritual things. So if you don't want to listen to too much of the natural, you can listen to all spiritual stuff. But there is a spiritual element to this to help amplify it. Because in life, you can grow only so far before you hit a ceiling. And then it feels like, Paul, I'm in a, I hit a ceiling. I can't break through. I'm just stuck in life. How do I break through the ceiling? There is a spiritual way to break through. Now, a lot of people who claim they're spiritual and claim they've broken through, they're still struggling. They're still going through a lot of problems, and they haven't. Just having the tools in your belt doesn't mean you're successful or you did it now you can build yourself and move in that direction but before that you didn't even have the tools you were just standing around like i don't even have the tools to get myself out of this situation so i just want to equip you with the tools and give you what you need to do everything that's in your heart everything god called you to everything that's your dream or your passion because you're not alone i'm your friend and i want to continue to talk to you continue to encourage you and speak life into you because I know you can do it. I'm investing into you because I see value. You come to my heart, I think about you, at times I pray for you because I know that God can help you. I know that you don't have to live a life in an existence which is just empty. Why are you alive? What are you doing? What's the purpose of all this? I want to cover all these topics and subjects because there's so much in life and life is so rich and you can have such an amazing time. Just close your eyes and imagine green, wide open spaces. Just close your eyes and in, uh, imagine a vast, infinite star of galaxies. Just see it. Just feel the freedom and the openness. Remember when you were young and you had no care in the world and you felt so free. Think about that feeling. Take yourself back there and now bring that into the future. Because you can have that kind of joy and freedom again. And even better now. Because you always wanted to do things when you grew up. Now you grew up and now you're like, man, it's not what I expected. I know. Life kicks you in the teeth. Things don't work out. You get married. You have kids. Troubles. Things can change. Your perspective can change. Who you are as a person can change. I don't try to change your circumstances. I try to focus on the thing that can change. The variable in this equation is you. You are the variable. You are the thing that can change. And when you do, everything in life starts reordering itself around you. Because now you're able to fit. Things just work out and things are smooth. So, in a nutshell, I want to talk about spiritual things next. Thanks for listening in. Have an amazing day. I bless you to write down your dreams, your goals, your passions. Just meditate on it. Speak about it. Share it with your friends teach it to someone else, describe what you're after, and man, that'll bring you so much hope and encouragement. Till next time, I'll see you later, and 
I hope my videos will be better next time. <laughs>